think I have enough shoes. <laughs> Hey, it's Amy. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video, if you can't tell already, is about shoes. I realize it's been a long time since I shared with you some of my favorite easy run shoes. So that's today's video. There's a lot of review videos out there that go into super detail and I just don't have time to do that in this video, but I'm going to share with you what I really love about each of the shoes that I use for my easy runs and maybe things that I don't love about them. So let's talk about shoes. pair I'm going to talk about are the Hoka Mach 4s. I think they're on the fifth version at least by now, but I've had these for probably a couple years. Because I'm really fortunate to have a lot of shoes to rotate between, it means that I don't always have the latest version of shoes. Let's talk about just briefly about the specs. So they weigh 7.10 ounces or 201 grams and their heel drop is 5 mil. So it's a low drop shoe, though not the lowest drop shoe I currently run it. I really like kind of the the fit of the upper, it's really breathable. It's super lightweight as well, which is awesome. I think they designed it so you could do speed workouts in it, but also an easy run shoe. And it's true, I have done a workout in it, but I honestly would prefer to have a plate in a workout shoe. But if you don't feel like having a plate and just want to have something that's like fast and really light on your feet, this is a great option. Hoka comes out and says it's a firmer cushion, but they say that because of the firmer cushion, it gives you a little snappier ride, which I can kind of see that. It doesn't like, you don't sink in, but it gives you kind of a, a little bit of a pop. A few cons about this is that it doesn't have like a huge amount of cushioning, so I probably wouldn't, or I don't do long runs in this, probably not over 20K or so, but that's just a personal preference. While it's not the first shoe I like immediately go grab to run in, it is a really nice shoe that I'm really glad I have in my rotation and super light and I should run in this more. As a side note, I find Hoka's fit long for me, so I always go down a size and I actually have these in a seven and I haven't got any blisters from them and I still have room in the toe box, so for me, it fits nicely and again, yeah, a little more fitted than, for example, the Clifton, you can kinda see. These are called, I think the colorway is called Pink Flamingo, which is fairly fitting. And these are the New Balance 1080 version 12, so the latest version of this shoe. So I was actually sent these shoes and they sent me the wrong size. I think these are eight and a half. And I think I'm now finding that I am a size eight in most shoes, except for Hoka, That's, they're special. But uh, even though it's an eight and a half, I don't find it too, too large. So I much prefer to have an eight. But very thankful to have these and I'm really happy, yeah, really happy to get the chance to finally try these babies out. Well, I'm really glad to have them. They're not, I say, my most favorite shoe, but they are, again, a great, solid, dependable shoe from New Balance. They're comfortable, they have a good amount of cushioning, as you can see, um, the stack height here, and they, yeah, they can hold up to lots of mileage and they're very, like, durable, like the oat sole here, like, I know these shoes will last a long time. I just find them a little heavy and the Fresh Foam X just doesn't give me anything. It doesn't give me any pop, it doesn't give me anything just super special. So the specs on this, it weighs about 9.9 .9 ounces and it's 280 grams. So yeah, if you think of the mock, it was 7.10 ounces and then boom, these babies are almost 10 ounces and they have an eight millimeter heel drop. So they're kind of like in the middle. So yeah, things I like about it is I don't feel unstable. It does have a little bit of like the kind of the rounded bottom. So it kind of rolls me along, which is always nice and has a good amount of cushioning, which is key for easy runs, recovery runs, etc. Cons about this shoe is I actually have been getting blisters and I'm pretty sure it's from these shoes. I hadn't got blisters. Like, you know, on my second toe, it's a little longer, so it does get a little bit of wearing, but I've been getting them on my big toe on either side, and I just had never gotten them before, and I, yeah, I think these shoes are why. But it's not like bad enough that I would stop wearing them, but I've just noticed a few more have popped up on my feet, which is not great. So they, they changed the upper, it's now this hypo-knit hypo material, which make it more breathable, 
it actually like the heel if you if anyone remembers the 10th version maybe the 11th as well but it used to be like a flexible like very soft heel and just people either loved it or hated it but now it's like a nice heel cup and supports your foot so you don't have any kind of you know flexible uh, I don't know unstable feeling and so I do appreciate kind of the fit and it's really soft of the upper and the heel counter yeah heavier but again these will last me many kilometers and I'm happy again to have these in my mix of running shoes. Okay, the Asics Nova Blast 2s. The third version of these have been out for a while, but I'm still <laughs> getting through these shoes. I think they're pretty much almost dead though, so I had to sh share with you about them because I really love running in them. Asics has some pretty cool colorways, I'm not gonna lie. So this weighs 235 grams or 8.3 ounces, so lighter than the 1080s, heavier than the mock, so nice in the middle and an 8 mil drop. You'll see that I have a lot of 8 mil drops and a couple lower drops, but this is actually low for ASICs. They, they're known for like 10, 12 like millimeter heel drops on uh, other shoes in their lineup and same with Brooks, but I like a good old 8 millimeter heel drop. Okay, so it uses their FF Blast midsole and I really find them like comfortable they're not like super poppy, but like they hold up to mileage. I used to do long runs when I wasn't doing workouts in them. I would do a long run in this shoe and I would never feel like it bottomed out or was like I could feel the cement or the cement, the pavement after a while, but they really held up to a lot of mileage on these. So I think I have almost 600 on them. Again, everyone's different. I'm a lighter, smaller runner, so I can, most shoes get away with a few extra kilometers on them, but be very careful about not to take your shoes too long. It's not worth like pushing them super long and getting injured, but for these, these have felt good, so I just keep running in them and then, but I, I think I'm gonna have to retire them, sadly, soon. I think they call it the Ahar, Ahar plus outsole, and if you look on them, the oat sole that really are no wear marks, which is shocking as I again run a lot in them. And in here in Halifax, we run in the park a lot and with like gravel, so there's been nothing, nothing to show that I run a lot of kilometers on these babies, so that's pretty great. The upper fits really nice, it's just like a just luxurious feeling and on the heel, everything's soft, but I think one of my main complaints about this shoe is that the upper isn't very breathable. My feet get really warm in them, especially if it's really hot outside, and yeah, that was probably my main concern, and thankfully I didn't get any blisters from getting overheated, but yeah, kind of not breathable for my liking. I find ASICS fits pretty like narrow in general, if you look again. I do every all my comparisons to like Hoka, but you can kind of see like a little more, more snug here in the upper here compared to the Clifton or even like the, let's look at the New Balance. Yeah, so if you have a wider sh foot, I probably, you'd have to be just careful about the ASICs and make sure that it doesn't rub on the insole here or on your toes. Just make sure that the fit feels good. But for me, ASICs fits my foot really nice. I actually fit in most shoes fairly well, so I'm, I know I'm lucky that way. But yeah, it feels really nice. It's held up to lots of kilometers. It's just been a really, really nice shoe and I'm sad that it's almost dead. Okay, we're on to the Hoga Clifton 8s. Again, the ninth version is out, but I am still wearing the 8s because I just got these recently and I have a lot of shoes. <laughs> I've had about, I don't even know how many pairs of Clifton's, but I got the 6 version and I real, still really miss the 6 version of the Clifton. These weigh about 7.2 ounces or 202 grams, so 7.2, they're lighter than the mocks, which, yeah, I guess so. Barely noticeable, like, they feel the same on my feet, like, weight-wise. The heel drop of these is 5 millimeter. The reason I love the Hoka Clifton's especially is just they're stable, they're like wider here. They, I know they look like a lot, trust me if you've seen the Bondi, that's a lot, but this has a really good amount of cushioning and you think 
for this amount of cushioning that they'd be like 20 pounds but again they're super light and you I barely feel them on my feet they are a little bit to get used to especially if you're not used to a wider shoe if you come from like Nike or Asics example for example they might be a little bit of adjustment just like they are a bit more on your feet if that makes sense but not not heavy just just more of a shoe and um, but I really like the meta rocker in them they just kind of like rock you along early early stage meta rocker I mean and just helps you be more efficient and I like having a low drop shoe or multiple low drop shoes in my rotation because it works different muscles in my legs and my body and it helps prevent injuries this has been one of my staples in my easy run shoe collection like I always have a Clifton in my shoe rotation the main complaint I have about the Clifton's is after the sixth version rest in peace they have added this kind of raised arch in the insole which I am not a fan of. I have slightly flatter feet. I find that it just hits my arch in the wrong place. So I don't notice it though until I get over 20 kilometers. I'm sure I'm not the only person who like doesn't like this, but and maybe maybe it's just me though, but I really am disappointed by the arch in the insole. And they keep they keep keeping it in. I don't understand, but maybe maybe a lot of people like it. So I'm sorry, maybe you love it, but I don't and I wish they didn't have it. But to say all of that and with the arch insole, don't let that scare you because again, you really don't feel it until longer distance and again, it might could be just me and I really enjoy wearing them. They're lightweight and if it doesn't scare you with the stack height again, it's not, it's not. There are way bigger shoes out there on the market now. I highly recommend giving the Hoka Clifton's a try. If you haven't noticed, I've been kind of going in order of my favorite shoes and it was a real toss up between what was my favorite shoe, but I think this is the second last or like second top favorite shoe, but this is the Saucony Shift 3. And I've had all three versions of this shoe and I have loved every single version. Again, I missed the first version. I don't know if you remember that colorway, but it was like the white and green and uh oh yellow and they I call them my Ronald McDonald's shoes they were kind of a lot but I love them though they have definitely have made improvements like especially on the upper compared to like the second version that was probably my least favorite thing about the second version was the upper and I know a lot of people got blisters from the upper but the third version I find it's like breathable and not quite as rigid and just a little they tone down what's on the shoe and it's a little lighter and I yeah I'm happy to have the third version so the specs in this is 8.1 ounces or 229 grams and it's a four mil drop so this is the lowest drop shoe I have I really really love the rocker in these like I feel it in the hokas but I feel it the most in this shoe that I just rolls you along but not like in a bad way don't be scared be like it rolls it rolls but it just helps you get be more efficient in your gait and I just really love the the feel of that on my feet especially if I'm really tired again it's not the lightest of shoes but it is lighter than previous versions and I'm very happy about that I think they get better each time I run in them like they're firm but they're getting softer but they're not they're never going to be like a plush super squishy shoe like that's just not what they're designed for or what they're meant to do but I do find they get softer I think another major pro of this shoe is the durability like these shoes I think of my other versions again have lasted a long time without feeling you know dead and I feel achy while I run in them so I think that's like for the bang for your buck these really really last a long time this is a size 8 which fits very well I would not go up a size or down a size this is fits me perfectly the only cons about this I guess is that it is a bit heavier and the cushion is a bit firmer so if you want something that's like super soft and just like feel it feels like pillows probably not the right shoe for you but if you want something that's gonna last kind of rolls you along it feels really nice on the foot uh, breathable upper really nice fitting compared to the other versions then Saucony Shift 3 is for you last but definitely not least is the Nike Invincible 2 and you can see the pure white version colorway is definitely not pure white anymore it's like 
it's real bad. Oh my goodness. I don't recommend buying white shoes. It was just, it was on sale, so that's why I got them. This is again the second version. The third version has come out, and I really wish, I hate when shoe companies do this to me. It's like, I love the second version and then the new version comes out and they just ruin the shoe. Again, I haven't run in the third version, but my husband got the third version because these were his favorite, like still are his favorite, the second version, and he does not like the third version, and which makes me so sad because I don't want these to die and make me have to get the third version. And you cannot find the second version of these anywhere online, or at least in Canada. If you can find them for me, please let me know if you see a women's eight or a men's 10. We would be forever grateful to you. I know it looks like a lot, like this is, these are moon shoes. Like look at the chunky heel on these. Like I have a problem with chunky, chunky shoes, but I, they're so soft, so responsive. It's just like if I'm tired and I just want to like go for a run and I just like put these on, it's so nice to run them. Like especially if my legs are beat up from a workout or a long run the day before. Like these are just super nice to put on. These weigh 9.10 ounces and 258 grams and they have a heel drop of nine. So these are actually my highest heel drop. Again, nothing crazy, but uh, it kind of range from nine to four. I just highly recommend having a wide range of heel drops. Your body will thank you. So back to the Invincibles, they have Zoomix foam, which is, again is Nike's premium foam, and it's very poppy and it's a dream to run on. If it's true to size, I have a size eight in them and that's, I wouldn't again change sizes in the next version. I think the main con of this shoe is that it just isn't built to last. Like Zoomix foam, once it dies, it dies hard. Like these probably won't last or they won't last as long as my shifts or even my like Clifton's for example, or the Nova Blast, like just, I don't know, the foam, it's so great for, for a long time, but then it just is dead. So they're probably almost to the end of their life because I love these shoes and I use them probably more often than I should. And it makes me sad because I don't want them to go away. Another thing about it is that it's not very durable. Like if you can see on my shoes, like the, it just rips like, the, you know, it probably doesn't help that I run again on gravel, but yeah, the outsole just rips and tears on, especially on the kind of arch here. It's just like, just eating away the sole sole and like, and yeah, you can just see, it's just losing, it's just losing its materials, which is never nice because these aren't cheap, but worth it. But yeah, I, I guess I would expect a shoe of this, you know, value to probably hold up a little bit better. So I guess that would be my main cons complaint. Also, the upper is a bit thicker. It's a bit warm in the summer. I My feet did sweat a bit and like the laces are kind of thicker. Everything's just a little, like they don't need, it doesn't need all this like extra cushioning padding. Like this would make it lighter if they just got rid of it. These are still my number one go-to easy run shoe, recovery run shoe, and I love them very, very much. I know not everyone has the luxury of having this many pair of shoes to alternate or rotate between for your easy runs or your long runs, but to be honest, a lot of these shoes have been given to me or I've gotten on sale and I've had for several years. I run a lot and I've put a great number of kilometers on each one of these shoes. I have a good idea of what I like about them, what I don't like about them, and these are all my own opinions and yeah, they're all, it's so, so fun to have different shoes to alternate between and yeah, again, I'm very, very fortunate and I just love shoes. That's all I have to say about these shoes and I will keep you posted if I get more shoes in the future as I, I know I will, but I'm determined not to buy any shoes until I retire maybe two pairs of this collection and then I will allow myself to get a new pair. But how about you? What shoes do you currently use for your easy runs? I love and so curious about what other runners do. So let me know in a comment below. I hope you are all doing well and running well. And if you're doing any races, please let me know how they're going and comment. And I just hope you enjoyed hearing about my many shoes. I'll see you next time.